Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So what I want to do in this video is take a distortion effect, show you how to do that, and take a slideshow concept and put them together to create a distortion slideshow. So this is going to be a great tutorial if you want to create a slideshow or you want to do this awesome distortion effect, which is great for transitions. And of course, as recently, this video is sponsored by Video Hive. If you're looking for top notch, top of the line After Effects templates, more specifically for distortion slideshows or transitions, Video Hive has the perfect template for you. Essentially, all the templates you're seeing right now are pre made and ready to code. So, when you get your hands on one of these templates, you can swap out your own work, bring in your own images, change out the text, and you can render it out within five minutes, allowing you to produce high end, high quality work within about five minutes. And that saves you a ton of time and also hopefully impresses your client. If any of these templates interest you, go ahead and check out my links in the description. Of course, if you're looking for inspiration, go ahead and check that out as well. I always suggest that to get new ideas. And of course, if you're not time crunch, you can save a lot of time. So let's go ahead and jump into this video and learn how to do a distortion slideshow. So here is our main composition called Tut. And all I have in here is one image. And when you have your first image in here, what you want to do is go to Layer, Precompose, and we'll call it Placeholder. And we'll call placeholder one and we'll move all attributes into new composition and click OK. So first things first, what we want to do in here is we want to duplicate this comp. So go up to edit, duplicate, and we're going to go ahead and get the distortion right out of the way because it's really easy to do. We'll go to effect, generate, cell pattern. All right, this is a new one. Let's go to the cell pattern and let's change this to crystallize HQ. And we'll go ahead and increase the contextual slider kind of like crazy. So we can even go past the slider if you want to. So that's pretty cool. And we'll come here to the size. We want to increase this by a little bit as well. So go ahead and make this defined a little bit. And we can go to disperse. And if you wanted to, you can make these in perfect squares. So keep that in mind. So this is really where how you want to distort this comes into play. So just go ahead and mess up this. We'll experiment this a little bit later. And this is pretty much good to go. We are done here. And when we're done here, what we want to do is pre-compose this layer. And we can call it distortion map. And click OK. Fantastic. Go ahead and hide this layer because we don't need it. Go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we can rename this layer to displacement. And we'll go to effect distort and we'll add displacement map. And under displacement map layer, we need to set this to our distortion map. And we'll go here and set the vertical displacement to zero. And we can come here and we can manipulate our image and we're going to get this. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? So let's go ahead and animate this right off the bat. So we'll want to animate this. So go ahead and set this all the way up to maybe like 200-ish. Add a keyframe for max horizontal displacement. We'll move forward to maybe a second. We'll decrease it by a touch so we have that movement in there. And we'll move forward just by a few more frames and we'll set it down to zero. And we'll move forward in time. And what we want to do is hit U on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes. We'll add another keyframe here so we have two keyframes here with zero on it. And we'll move forward again. And we can just set this up back to 200 and move this keyframe forward to four seconds just so we have this distortion in here. So this is basically what we have and you know, nothing spectacular, but we do have this set up and ready to go. Okay, so what we want to do from here is duplicate the placeholder one here. And we'll grab the rectangle tool. You can grab any shape tool you want. It can actually be ellipse. Let's actually grab the ellipse. I think that would be a cool option here. And what we want to do is come right here to the center and we'll want to click, hold down shift on our keyboard and also control on a PC. I don't really know it on the Mac anymore, but we'll come over here and draw out a very small circle like this. And from here, we're going to go ahead and toggle switch to modes and make all these layers 3D layers, except for the adjustment layer. And we'll hit A on our keyboard for anchor point and we'll move this forward in time to Z space here to about right here. And now what we can do is duplicate this layer. And we can do the same thing, hit A on keyboard for anchor point, and we'll bring this forward. And we hit MR keyboard for the mask. We can go ahead and invert the mask. And we'll click on the mask one here. And we'll hold down Control T. And this will bring up the transform here. And what we we'll want to do is hold down Shift and Control at the same time. And we'll want to make this a little bit bigger. And we'll come here and duplicate the placeholder again. And we'll do the same exact thing. We'll make this mask a little bit bigger. And we'll drag this from the center. And we'll go to the anchor point, make sure to we go to 100 on the second placeholder here, and maybe we'll go to like 160 on the other one. There, so. So very slightly, you can see that circle in there. If we have to, we can always increase this a little bit greater than what we need it to be. 
and we'll duplicate this again and it's the same concept we'll just do this a few more times so now we have this circle mask in here with the shape transitions and all that and that looks pretty cool and obviously we have the black borders on the side here so what we want to do is take the last placeholder here duplicate it bring it to the top and from here what we'll do is just set this to subtract and we'll turn off the inverted and make sure to put this layer on top of the adjustment layer so now we only have the distortion in the middle here and this looks pretty cool so now what we can do from here just for example we can add in a, a title so I'll just really quick so we can type in like you know whatever we want it to be so I'll just type in Sun Duck go to the line tab and center this up you don't see the line tab go up to window align and we can just draw out a quick rectangle here so grab the rectangle tool and we draw out like a perfect little rectangle here put it underneath our title and we go select both these layers go to the line tab and center both of these up no problem at all and we can animate this by going to the rectangle one move forward in time go to the rectangle path one we can break the chain for size we can add a keyframe for size move that keyframe forward in time and set the size down to zero this is a really quick way to animate this so boom so that looks cool we can make both these keyframes easy easy keyframes by hitting f9 on our keyboard and if we want to animate the text on the same time as the reveal here, we can duplicate the shape layer, bring the shape layer to the top, grab Sun Duck or your text layer, toggle switch to the most until you see the track mat here, and set the track mat to alpha mat. So now the title will reveal on just like that. And we can grab all three of these layers here, pre-compose these, and call it title placeholder. And you may have to pause a little bit, but there's a million ways to do a title, so that's why I kind of ran through that really quick. And we can put this placeholder, this title placeholder underneath our displacement map. And now it's going to take the same form as our, as our distortion. Now let's talk about the transition and the nice camera movement. So let's go up to layer, new camera. And that's good. Click OK. Make sure this is at the top. It actually really doesn't matter. Toggle switch to modes and make sure everything's a 3D layer except for the adjustment layer. That doesn't need to be a 3D layer. And we actually won't make the title a 3D layer just because this will add a little bit more parallax to this. So with our camera, what we want to do is just add a very nice camera movement. So let's go to the camera here. Just hit here on the keyboard for position. Add a keyframe for position. And we'll go to the end here. And basically, we'll grab the camera tool, which you just click on this camera here. And we want to grab the orbit camera tool here. So we'll kind of, and we'll kind of rotate this scene a little bit, maybe like this. And we'll move forward here. And we'll want to continue to move this over to the other side. Kind of like that. And we can move this keyframe over to like maybe five seconds. So now I'm going to bring this into over here like three seconds. Okay, so basically this is set up to be our first slide. So we have one slide in here. And when we're done, we can take all of our layers here and we can pre-compose it. And we can call it slide one. Perfect. And over here, basically we have our duplicate. Obviously, we have our slide one here. We want to duplicate the slide to make it slide two. In my case, it's slide three because I already done this. But we'll come here and we'll bring it back in the composition. And we can offset this, you know, in time. And we'll just duplicate. We can come in here and we need to duplicate placeholder one. And we can select all of our placeholder ones in here. And we can hold an alt on our keyboard. For, and we can just drag this on top of our placeholders here. And we go to placeholder three or two in your case. And we can drag in our new image. Hit, you know, might have to scale it in. This is a really big image. And we'll go back to our main comp. And now this is all swapped out. And basically, we can change out our title. So now we have this nice distortion effect in here. And if we want, we can go back into this main comp here. Go to the camera. Hit U to bring up the keyframes. And what we can do here is select both our keyframes. Right-click it. Go to keyframe assistance and time reverse keyframes. This way, so it'll be moving from left to right here. And then basically, it'll be moving from the right to the left. So that transition will seem very seamless, kind of a nice looping transition. And here is our transition. So this is really cool. We had this distortion slideshow. You can go back and forth. And any element that you add underneath the displacement map will have the distortion effect applied to it. And it's really cool. It's really interesting value here. And I know I didn't put a lot of effort into the titles, but there's a lot of ways to do this. And I have done promo videos in the past. So I'll drop a couple links in those in the description. So if you want to learn more about title animation and promo videos or slideshows like this, go ahead and check those links in the description. And remember, if you're looking to save time and looking for high quality After Effects templates that are going to be ready to go, go ahead and check out Video Hive. Those links are in the description like I talked about at the beginning of the video. Check the links in the description if you're looking to enhance your work and get it done extremely quick. So 
please be sure to hit that subscribe button for more After Effects videos. Drop a like if you found this video helpful. Hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And always be creating.